So hello, I'm Jan, and this talk was originally supposed to be held by our CEO, but he decided to escape, so this burden is up to me. And I will talk how DeFi is missing a key primitive, which is privacy, and how Aztec Connect fixes it. Fixes it. So many of you probably remember that last year there was this GameStop saga, and basically what has happened is that uh, this information about the big short position of one hedge fund leaked, and then since internet is kind of random, like people decided that it would be fun to just ape into the stock and pump the price, and the fund got liquidated. And this was caused by the fact that like the information leaked. And so the situation in Web3 is even worse. Like, basically anyone who is able to use a web browser and can go to Etherscan and search like what anyone is doing. And this is made even worse by people's use of ENS. So we can see quite commonly that people use their ENS names with trading because they apparently have no idea that it's not private. And to drive this point home, like basically there is this ENS name docs.eth and if I want to spend some time on it, I can just like basically figure out that the user has Uniswap position, Aave position, and how amount of USD available for collateral. And you might be asking why this is bad, because like plenty of the times it's considered that transparency is like a nice feature. But when we are talking about financial information, it can be bad because like it allows basically anyone to assess solvency of any entity on Ethereum. And this information can be used by adversarial parties like MEV bots. And then there is also, of course, a risk of doxing and consequences in the physical world. This can be as innocent as your friends shaming you for your bad trades, but it can also make you a target of crime. So the solution, at Aztec we think that the solution are privacy preserving rollups. And our privacy preserving rollup is called Aztec Connect. It is live on mainnet. And we like to call it VPN for Ethereum. And I think this is quite a nice mental model because essentially what VPN is doing in the Web2 world is that it replaces your IP address with the IP address of the VPN provider. And essentially what we do is that we replace your Ethereum address with the Ethereum address of Aztec. So I wanted to show some demo, but of course it's not very possible here, so I will just show some screenshot. So this is our website ZK Money, and when you come there you can click Shield. And then you can choose an alias. This is like an analogy to ENS name on Ethereum mainnet. Then we will create your account. This will take a while because there are some complex computation happening behind the scene. And then you deposit the amounts of funds. And behind the scene, there actually happened quite a few things. There happened two transactions on Ethereum. One deposits the funds into a roller processor contract another approve this, approves this hash, and then there is like a generation of cryptographic node on L2, and this cryptographic node allows you to spend those funds. So once you deposit, this is what it looks like, it's like a normal wallet. And then there are opportunities, so you can deposit into an arbitrary bridge we've implemented. So for example, if I deposit to Euler, I have this screen and there are quite a few interesting things here which I want to explain. First one is a batch. So there is quite an interesting feature to Aztec Connect and that is that we allow for this thing called batching. And basically what it means is that when there are multiple users which want to do the same interaction on Ethereum L1, we basically do only one interaction on L1 and on the inputs of that interaction is like a sum of those token amounts. So basically when there are like 10 users which want to deposit ETH to Lido, and let's say for simplicity each user has one ETH, we only call the stake function on Lido contract once with the 10 Ether. And then later on we distribute the results to the users, and in this case like the results would be the output tokens which is staked ETH. Yeah, I would like to 
briefly peek what is behind the scenes and we use UTXO model. It was talked about by quite a lot in the Aztec 3 presentation before. But basically what is a UTXO model is that you can imagine when you have banknotes and you want to go to a merchant and you want to pay with a banknote. So what happens is that you can like split this banknote but you give the merchant the banknote and he gives you the money back. And this is essentially what we do as well. And we do it with this thing, joint split circuit. And essentially what this allows is that you have two possible nodes on the input, which get destroyed in the process. And then there are two nodes on the output. And for example, in the example of, of the bridge interact of the DeFi deposit to Lido, uh, on the input would be, for example, 0.5 ETH. And in case the original value held in your account was one node with one ETH, this node would get destroyed and on the output would be this claim node and another value node. That value node would hold the remaining ETH balance. So it would be 0.5 ETH. And that claim node would allow you to later on claim the funds resulting returned from the DeFi interaction. So you might be asking how is this possible that like this is private when the settlement, like the interaction actually happens on Ethereum. And this is a good point. And uh, here in the left bottom corner, we can see what it looks like, like what token transfers there are. And this looks pretty not private, but the thing is that thanks to zero knowledge proofs, nobody can distinguish like who is actually originated this interaction. And also there is this aspect that there can be multiple users per interaction. And so these balances get even more obfuscated. And currently there are more than 50,000 unique users. Last time I checked, it was like 51,000 something. And it means that like the amount of people you get height with is pretty large. You might be wondering, does it scale? Rollup is quite a common buzzword and it does scale. And one reason why it scales is because there is that one L1 transaction per multiple users. But of course, everything is always more complicated and there are overhead costs to rollups. And these costs are cost of posting a rollup and per transaction cost of call data. Luckily, this cost of posting a rollup gets split between many users. So when there are many users in the rollup, this goes down. And the cost of call data is fortunately going to down a lot with this Ethereum improvement proposal for 844. So hopefully, like in a not so distant future, the cost of interacting privately with DeFi will actually get very close to the gas cost of that one L1 call divided by the number of users. Uh, now you might be wondering, like, how do we integrate? Is there like some integration needed? And unfortunately, yes, but it's not so complicated. And we have this thing called bridges, but bridges nowadays have quite a bad connotation. And in our case, the bridge is just a simple smart contract. So there is no multi-sig risk. And the smart contracts tend to be fairly simple. So here on the left, we see the ID5 bridge interface, and there we basically just defi define input and output tokens. And then we have total input value, which is the sum of those users' input balances and AUX data, which is arbitrary data which can be used to pass to the bridge contract. And on the bottom right corner, we can see the implementation of the, con of the function itself. And in this case, it's an implementation of an ERC4626 bridge. And we see that it is like really trivial. We basically just call deposit if deposit flow is executed, or we call redeem in case withdrawal flow is executed. Now you might be asking if there are some limitations and there are quite a few. I would say the biggest one are the longer settlement time. And that is because when you, you ha we have to wait for the batch to get submitted to, to Ethereum. Like luckily you can pay if you are really in a hurry so you can pay for the full roll-up block, and in that case, you could get the instant settlement time. But most users don't want to do it because it's fairly expensive, and this causes like some problems with slippage. 
So for example, you can imagine when you trade on Uniswap, you define this slippage parameter, which basically protects you from, uh, from MEV, MEV bots exploiting you, or it, in general, it can protect you from market movements. And the longer settlement time can also cause issues with liquidations, because you can imagine if you are close to being liquidated and you need like fast to exit the position or something, in that, that is problematic. But always you can pay for the instant settlement. Then there is the limitation uh, by the amount of data which can be on the input. Like most of the time this works quite fine because it's 64 bits of data and with like a bit of smart encoding we can actually put a lot of information there. But it can be problematic when we, for example, want to pass an Ethereum address because that is 160 bits. Then another limitation might be that the system doesn't work that well with esoteric tokens because those esoteric tokens might have insufficient anonymity sets. And basically what that means is that there is only like one esoteric token user and he would deposit into Aztec and he would be the only one like working with the DeFi protocols. It would be pretty obvious that is that one user. But in practice, I think this is not that big of a deal because usually users want to use the high liquid tokens and I don't feel personally that is such a big limitation. Then another limitation might be that some protocols are specifically designed to work with message sender. So for example, when, when those protocols just work with tokens, you can imagine that there is like token on the input and token on the output, which is for example the case of Lido. Like this works perfectly because there is no limitation. We just have tokens on the input and then we distribute the results. But when the protocols work specifically with message sender, which can, for example, can be when we are borrowing LUSD from liquidity, uh, it's pretty complicated to do the implementation. And how we've solved it is that we deploy these multiple bridges and each of the bridge has fixed collateral ratio. And like if the bridge was like close to being liquidated, user can't add more collateral, but the user can always repay the debt and exit. So even though there are limitations, usually there is like some way how to work around them. Now I would like to talk about advantages, and I think those advantages are pretty huge. Because Aztec Connect doesn't need redeployment of smart contracts on L2, because we work directly with smart contracts on L1. And this means that, for example, liquidity is not fractured. And I did my own personal experiment when it was bull market, and I checked like how much it makes sense to do, for example, swap on L2. And it turned out that for not so large amounts, like over $5,000, even with the high gas fees, it still made sense to use Ethereum L1. And that is because the liquidity was just so much higher, so the slippage would be just so much lower that like the fees would be worth it. And Another advantage is a lower risk for integrated protocols. And that is since we don't need to, the target protocols don't need to like redeploy again on, on our L2. Uh, there is no risk for them, like for example, the risk of fracturing liquidity. Then I would like to mention that there are also of course non-DeFi use cases, but DeFi is like a nice buzzword, so we mentioned it here. And I think very cool use case could be private DAO voting, and that is because in all the voting systems, privacy is very important. And another interesting use case might be NFT minting. Yeah, thank you for the attention. Thank you, John. We still have questions, time for questions. So here to the right, Nicole. Ah, yeah, I can, I can put that, I can let them know. Podemos poner la última slide, por favor, la presentación de Jan. Yeah, just a quick question. Uh, how expensive is, the, here, 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 yeah. sorry, uh, you were looking for me. How expensive is, is, is each operation? Because it seems like you are doing complicated cryptography on Solidity. Uh, so on, on Ethereum L1, it costs like the same as I mentioned before, like the call itself, and then there is the cost of call data and processing the rollup. Uh, so is, does it answer the question? Like I, I have to admit, I'm not a cryptographer. I'm just like a basic Solidity engineer. Uh, well, as well. So 
Yeah, um, so it's not very expensive. A second, uh, can this work on, on alternative chains like uh, like other in, in other L2s, like having yeah. one in Aztec and... Okay, so we, our contract is implemented in Solidity, so we can deploy it to any EVM chain. And like our L2 infrastructure just uses generic JSON RPC, so like there is no fundamental issue why that would not be possible. But like an interesting note is that it might not make sense because usually those other L2s have also like have to post the call data on Ethereum L1. So it means that if you, for example, were running over optimism, we actually would not save much gas. We have one there on the left side, then there, and then the third one. Uh, thanks for the talk. Um, you mentioned you have over 50,000 users um, on ASDAQ net yes. um, network. Um, who, a couple questions, like who has integrated besides Euler? Um, like who's on the docket and like what are those 50,000 users using it for currently? Yeah, so we have quite a few integrations. I think the most important are, for example, Lido, Euler, then we have Yearn. Oh, we are working on Uniswap, Liquidity. And yeah, we have a grants program where we basically give some developers money to build the integrations. And yeah, that's it. And where are the users using it for currently, mainly? Uh, I think that like in general, the farming vaults are quite popular. So we have quite a few users of Yearn. And we've also built this thing called DCA Bridge which allows like users to DCA into ETH or DAI, and it's also becoming quite popular. DCI is dollar cost averaging for those who don't know. Um, I got the mic already. Uh, so uh, one of my, my question was around what you're doing to try to deal with this settlement, like waiting times and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And I was wondering if like, as you integrate with other protocols, if that's like a breaks, or brings in composability challenges and kind of how you're thinking about solving that in the long run? Yeah, so there are no composability challenges because it's running on Ethereum L1, like the calls. And like the best how we can deal with the settlement times is basically having enough users that it, the, that it makes, that it's profitable to submit the roll up blocks frequently. But as we said, if there is like some user which really urgently needs it to be settled, he can always like pay for the instant settlement. How much does it usually cost if it's just like one user or it depends? I mean, when it's batched, like currently it costs like $1 to deposit into Euler. Hello. Um, thanks for the awesome talk. Um, one example you gave at the end was like a private NFT purchase. Um, does that mean the NFT will be owned by the Aztec address? Uh, yeah, exactly. It would be owned by the Aztec address, but there is this thing called, we don't currently like support NFTs directly in our UI, but we have this thing called virtual assets, which basically allows like a representation of any ownership. So, like on Ethereum, of course, it, it would like stay within, either within the bridge, it would stay within the bridge contract, but yeah, the user could then in, interact with it by using the virtual assets. Virtual assets, basically what it does is that it like doesn't exist on Ethereum L1, but we create this, another value node on our L2, which contains the information which can then be passed to the bridge and worked with. So yeah, the, it would stay within the contract on Ethereum. Yeah. Um, my question is, uh, can you do scripting logic on the L2 itself? So like not on a bridge, but within the L2? Uh, I mean, it's not accessible to like developers, but it's possible to like build circuits. But I mean, it, it's not the goal of Aztec Connect, it will be the like we will have generalized smart contract once Aztec 3 is available, which will be in a year or more. So like things like multi sigs on the L2 itself, that's not really possible yet. That's like Aztec. Actually, there is an implementation of multi sig. It works with like those account cryptography. So yeah, we have multi sigs. Awesome. Thanks. More questions? 
And then here. Test, test. Uh, so the, the always a fun question about regulatory risk. Um, okay. Obviously, this has like a, sounds like a mixing component, similar to Tornado. Um, what are your thoughts about that and uh, that, 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 that risk? Yeah, so currently how we approach it is that we limit the deposit si size and basically like our goal is to avoid the use of hackers, avoid users, hackers using our platform. And like the big issue with Tornado Cash was that like 70% of the money there was illicit. So basically we are just trying to make it impractical for hackers to use our platform. What's, it's a the, bit limit? Ex what's, the, what's the limit? I think currently it's like 10 ETH per deposit, but we might okay. increase it in the future. Okay, thank you. Can you share a little bit more? Um, I'm, I'm over here in the front row. Your 50,000 users, can you give us a sense of like, before Aztec, what were they doing? Were they doing the same thing, just totally in public? Or as a result of Aztec, are they now doing things that they previously weren't doing? Oh, I'm not so sure how to answer, but I would say it were like general like DeFi users and they just wanted that privacy, so they deposited to Aztec. But I actually didn't do the analysis. We have four minutes more. If you have any questions, you have John. He has been really brave to substitute the CEO. <laughs> Congrats, big round of applause. Just prepared this. Thank you. Thank you.